No. No. Oh, he's done. He's done. It's over. It's open, open the door, but the fence giving them trouble. The suspect and there out. they go. Person to just wrong on the wrong side, side of the road, the road. now. Oh. That might force him to back off a little bit here. Really, really oh, a so dangerous dangerous. maneuver. The most dangerous thing we've oh. seen. Um, <laughs> You know, this is an old vehicle right here that does not have the kind of safety equipment that newer vehicles have. If this goes, if this driver goes head on with another vehicle, oh this gosh. is going to end very, very badly for him. Yes, we just have to hope that he gets on the right side of the roadway. This is just, you know, people are out and about starting their weekend unaware that somebody's going to come barreling down the road the wrong way and such a large, a really sturdy truck there and making a very gorgeous. aggressive turn here. We're watching there. Oh, so many people on, just unaware of that, that. Ontario piece. is aggressive in this. You know, as Des mentioned, I thought that they would yeah. back off when he went wrong side of the road. And, you know, if, if this were LAPD or one of the sheriffs, L.A. County Sheriff, that would almost instantly guarantee the cancellation of this chase. Uh, but that's not the case. When we have this in, inland, even though we're in L.A. County, Wait. we're dealing with an Inland Empire law enforcement agency. Wait, is that a cheat code? You just drive on the wrong He's side of the road, cops stop chasing oh. you? I just hate seeing this because wow. it's just so dangerous. And here's a big truck there going through the intersection oh. again. Oh, oh. going to make that turn, yeah, though. Yeah, I think so. Yes. And uh, again, yep. this is just a, a truck that has been reported stolen. Uh, Ontario police I didn't know that. after this driver encouraging this person to stop, but certainly not uh, showing any signs that is willing to even slow down at this point continuously Bro, going on the wrong side I don't understand if you're going to steal a truck or if you're going to steal a car why this uh, like it sucks ass exactly where this it's is. not maneuverable <laughs> <laughs> curious, no not waiting for a song give me the OG one and unfortunately it doesn't look like either of the tires were hit uh was there something in the passenger side there Dez? whoa whoa oh, wow. oh! wild turn there <laughs> god damn he's driving the fuck out of it dude with that uh with that k rail that they hit what they made contact on the southbound 605 uh earlier closer to the 60 freeway but look at this almost exclusively oh wrong way and, driving now and for no How reason nerve-wracking for all of no reason at all. I mean, for all these people uh, that have just gotten off work trying to get home, here comes this maniac barreling towards you now. He's 50, brave. 60 miles an hour, gunning, you know, right towards the hood of your vehicle. You see Ontario PD here. They are maintaining almost the same speed He's on British. the right side of the road, but just incredibly nerve-wracking, insanely risky, really, really rolling the dice here to try to avoid uh, some traffic here on Workman Mill, which is a very Ooh. busy street. Oh. Around a, a turn now, wow. Uh, around that turn, I mean, there's no way that people could have seen this person coming through. But coming through the uh, red light now, at least getting back onto the right side of the road, onto uh, uh, Norwalk Boulevard here. Um, so once again, paralleling the uh, 605 freeway, just a, an insanely dangerous pursuit so far. So dangerous, you know, so often those wrong way drivers are on the road at night. So their headlights give you a little, uh, you know, advance notice that they are yep, coming yep. the wrong way. But here, broad daylight, the color of this truck, it is, oh boy, Oof. very close, very close. Harder to see now because of those trees, oh Desmond, but this is just yeah, yeah, no. really oh. nerve-wracking to see. Oh my God, bicyclist, fast. right oh. there. Oh my gosh. It went right underneath us, so I had to zoom out oh there for a second God. to reorient the camera. But as we zoom back in here, I mean, this is just so, so crazy uh, to see this. And yeah, there was a, you know, a cyclist down there. If, if you have someone, you know, in the oh bike lane, goodness. I mean, look how, look how, look how, how close. fast the opposing traffic is going. You know, if you're adjusting your radio or something like that, and you take your your eyes off of the road for one second. Dude, the real problem is the cops. If you're on They're fucking so dumb. Why haven't they shut off traffic? Point, so like, what are they doing? Ontario PD's like sitting around twiddling their fucking thumbs. Dog, shut the fucking thorough lanes. Like, what are you doing? Hello? No, not shoot this guy. This is so dumb. There, uh, just so nerve wracking watching as uh, coming up around some more cars here. And again, oh my god, he's gunning road. it, dude. And I don't know how close those cruisers are behind them because sometimes yeah. just those lights and sirens give other drivers a little bit of a heads up, but oh. Uh, Squeezing between those cars, this is just so dangerous. Well, and that's the problem. When he is going on the wrong side of the road and there is traffic on the correct side of the road, those officers are not going to be able to be as close to him to exactly. maybe give those people a warning. And, you know, we talk about prevent or, you know, what can bring this to an end. 
when you have an agency that is not in their city anymore, uh, they can't out. get other units to get ahead of this to lay spike strips or do anything like that. Now, it's very possible that they're working with Whittier PD to, you know, try to have them help out with some spikes or something like that. But when you have a, a agency that is so far away from their city that, that getting, um, you know, some backup from your own officers to try to get ahead of this is really not an option here unless you've got these outside agencies assisting. Uh, you've got, it uh, looks like the uh, Ontario police helicopter is still the one that is with this. So who knows if they're able to talk to Whittier or if Ontario's dispatch is talking to Whittier. But hopefully there is something going on behind the scenes to try to, you know, spike this car and get this to be done. Absolutely. This is just really a nerve wracking uh, chase here when you've got this driver just so willingly going over on the wrong side of the road at such a high rate of speed and people are just unaware that this is coming right at them. So uh, just so dangerous and uh, Des is giving us a very close look at this. This is one of the worst drivers we've seen. How far away oh, there, is someone, there is someone in the passenger Wait, is seat. There? Is that I, someone? No, 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 just, uh, no, I'm clothing? sorry. No, ne never mind. There's there's something there in the, the it, it, it made me it kind of looked like someone wearing a pink shirt or something there for a second, but too. no, I, I think, yeah, I think it is just. This just is the one of the absolute. Point, it so. looked like scariest like drivers, drivers we've asshole. seen on this it's broadcast. Sorry, it looked like he was like looking in the back seat or something, or had his body turned around. I don't know if you caught that at all. Uh, no, I, I didn't. We got kind of under that, that canopy of trees as the suspect gets ready to go underneath us again. Yeah, going so sixty, going sixty miles on these like local streets. Oh my God! Look at how he's whizzing past. Going 60 miles on these local streets, and also on top of that, constantly driving on the wrong side of the road. This literally is a uniquely bad one. It's like worse than any other ones that we watched. I wonder if they've gotten a directive to to give this guy a lot more space than they have been, or or what they've been told. But it didn't look like they were nearly as aggressive as they were before. Well, they're most likely trying to give him a little more space, hoping that he will slow down. It does seem like. Uh, you know, these turns are a little wider than they were. It doesn't seem like he has as much control of this truck, but uh, certainly those speeds are not slowing down at all on these small streets going 70 oh miles an hour so fast. Unreal. Uh, this Unreal. is just so dangerous, so dangerous to watch, seeing what could happen. See how wide those turns are, Des? And you see what it, I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, this vehicle really can't take it now. These older T Tacomas are some of the trustiest, most reliable vehicles on the planet, but this guy's driving it like it's a Porsche, you know, uh, the, the, the way trying to take these turns so quickly and that with, you know, just trying to take kind of, kind of these, these tight turns with the steering wheel. And he's already come so close to losing control here at a few uh, different junctures. So that's what makes this, you know, even that much more dangerous could easily spin out and smack into another vehicle or, or something like that if they're not careful. And oh, back on the wrong side, oh, not back just the wrong side, side. the far, the farthest lane that he could possibly be there uh, to get around and the, the, you know there's barely even any traffic so you know then you get these divided roads oh like this and you just imagine oh. Uh, oh. what these poor people are thinking oh as people having oh. to to jump out of the way of this uh, maniac here wrong oh. way you know whittier boulevard whittier and washington right here this is bro this is going to turn into a full-blown head-to-head collision as it continues to barrel on the wrong side of the road westbound it's nuts this continues, it's I nuts. Don't know how this does not end badly. It is. It is tough to see because we all know how dangerous this is. It seems like thing something's dragging behind the truck now, and uh, I don't know what that is. But it, it, uh, I think it's a strap. It looks like the that wood was closer together. It was being held, and I think that. I was about to say, like even the wood, wood falling is dangerous. Hanging, which of course is even more concerning because if that wood is not strapped down apparently they stole this car flying that's like a missile going through the air exactly exactly especially yep. at these uh speeds that are happening and and this driver you know so often we see pursuits they stay in the same area they start doing circles but this person has not been going on the same way so it makes it harder for officers to even try to figure out where to put out the spike strip and this person just does not appear to be wanting to slow down to stop at all being so dangerous on the wrong side of the road and people are just not aware that this person's coming towards them so fast at an intersection now, slowing down just a bit to make this turn. But uh, that's a classic to come. I'd be right pissed if I was the owner. Right yeah, bro. I think. Yeah, as we uh, make a southbound turn here on pretty Sorenson, bad. And again, into the center, by the wrong side, right between two vehicles. 
uh, just really, really threading the needle right here. My pilot, Mike, doing an excellent job making sure that uh, the suspect doesn't Ooh. get uh, underneath us again uh, here. But then, you know, and then you get uh, these divided roads where if they wanted to cut over to the right side to avoid a vehicle, they wouldn't even be able to do that. Now making a, a westbound turn here onto Slauson. So another very busy street, and you, you know, wonder what what is their goal here to, to to try to evade officers? And now you can see Ontario is kind of back uh, underneath as the suspect. No, this is a second gen, way less valued than a first again. gen. Owner uh, doesn't care. On, on is it Toronto. because he has an extended uh, cab? They are coming the, up. The best that he can. But yeah, here, here, yeah, here is Ontario PD. They are back in it. Uh, not too far away from the suspect, but every time that they try to get close uh, to, to, to the suspect's vehicle, that's when we start to see the super dangerous stuff onto the wrong side of the road to get away. And here again, right there as Ontario was, you know, not too far away from us, we make another southbound turn. You see a couple of units there as, uh, once again, spinning the camera around. And uh, so back onto Norwalk Boulevard. So we've kind of been in this area, not really circling so much, but kind of aimless but we have been in Whittier on a lot of very very busy streets here wrong way driving again how this has not already ended in a crash is is really miraculous it really is it's just uh, just awful to see that he's just showing no regard for anyone else on the road as he flies down the wrong side of the road and uh, so many people are out ready to start their weekend unaware that this truck which has no headlights on uh, is on the wrong side of the road so. barreling at them uh, also want to wear that at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And that if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. It's kind of fucked up. Refusing to pull over. This is a stolen truck that was reported. Ontario police have been trying to get this driver to pull over. And uh, it was on the 60 for quite some time. True. Been on the real crime is now. getting paywalled at the top of the hour and not seeing what happens. And wood in the back of that truck. But uh, again, just refusing to stop or slow down does yeah really and, my you know, bourbon the, the, gamer they give the five this, good this this subs allowing five the, people to the bed of the truck avoid the top of the hour ad break let's go well because uh, as we make a uh, trying to make another turn actually just continuing here uh onto the right side of the road uh for a second on our walk boulevard i'm just wondering if that's complicating things for the authorities as well if they were you know thinking about a, a pit maneuver or something like that that stuff could go flying and, and that could be you know an unpredictable factor because it certainly seems like the way Ontario is behaving as they try to get up pretty close to the vehicle, like if, if they had an opportunity perhaps to do a pit maneuver, it's not clear if that was their strategy or not. But every time that, that they, they try to do that, he, he just goes immediately onto the wrong side of the road as there they are again. And you see actually going and, on the wrong and side does, themselves. You know, we are to going to, to of course, keep with this suspect. covering this pursuit with uh, Pat Harvey. Mike still here, keeping a very close eye on what's happening with this uh, stolen truck that is continuing to evade officers. Yeah, and here we go, uh, Des, you know, Ontario PD right on their tail. They've gone through several jurisdictions, never giving up control of this pursuit. CHP asked them if they wanted to take it over. They said they didn't. Now we're in the city of Whittier where Whittier PD could get involved, and so far they haven't either. Uh, and Ontario, Des, right, but kind of back up on their tail after kind of backing off when he was doing all that wrong side of the road driving. They're like, it's ours. Yeah, absolutely. Right here with them, and you not not losing uh, the suspect on the ground, where you know a lot of other agencies might have given this one up already, or at the very least uh, backed off and uh, tried to keep uh, tabs from the <clears throat> air. So they really do seem determined to uh, get the suspect one way or another. But how they're going to do that is anyone's guess. They have the state should pay for any expenses to pay a reward if you're a citizen who deliberately hits someone getting chased during a car chase. Are you crazy? That's like deputizing citizens to do the most dangerous thing possible. No, the state should actually make it illegal to chase cars, which it does in many cases, so that this kind of shit doesn't happen. Are you nuts? I can see that being horrible in like a million different ways. Do you guys think that that's like how it normally is? He can ditch the car. I know, but you can pursue the suspect through different means. I think you're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Having the license plate means that you can utilize the fucking, uh, you can utilize like the, the speed cameras around the city. You can utilize CCTV footage. You can literally actually like, you know, where the car is, you can continue monitoring where the car goes to eventually it's not going to literally drive like a fucking maniac if cops aren't 
In most circumstances, oh shit. Fuck. In most circumstances, when someone steals a car and there isn't a police pursuit, how do you think uh, uh, crimes are solved? Chad is acting like Chad's so Amerabrained that they literally think the only way that you can like handle a situation like this is by pursuing it with cops for like three hours and sometimes killing the guy. That's like, how do you think they do it in other places, man? Thought he might, they might try to pit this huge truck. From your vantage point now, Desmond, are they, have they backed off again? Freeway. We know we see them um, going in and out, you know, from time to time. By the way, there's a huge yeah, amount yeah, of these already, kinds of situations that go unsolved, as, as too, for the record. Except at that point, you have to weigh the cost benefit, right? The cost of, like, continuing to do a pursuit of this magnitude is tremendous harm to the safety of, of so many individuals, potentially, potential harm. Like, it's just not worth it. That's why people will often just, like, let it go. Oh, my God, he's just, like, straight off-roading. This guy's going nutty with it, dude. I've never seen nothing like this. Oh, he's so cooked. Oh, he's cooked. He's going to have to... No. No. Oh, he's done. He's done. It's over. Open it's open the door, but the fence giving them trouble. The suspect and there they out. go. Out and on freeway here. Oh, boy. Mm. So we are underneath uh, in the wash here just to the west of the 605. Uh, talk about desperation there to get away. You're trying to keep a wide shot. We'll see if they come through the other side here. But, uh, wow, this one just took a very crazy turn. Guys, you know, Cosin, he's a white guy. They don't, they don't there, suspect him. Desmond, we see that one cruiser pull away that was that was close by. But do, do, do we see any no, other vehicles I, in I, the area? I don't. Ooh. Imagine there's a bike I down do, there. I, we I haven't do seen not. him I come mean, out they, either. They have, uh, no, I, there's, there's at least one, possibly two helicopters. Oh, there's a uh, biker. Here see, I just uh, saw a biker. A cyclist getting ready to go by in the bicycle lane. Uh, just looking, well, I see a little bit of wrestling in the water there. Uh, maybe they crossed to the other side, but uh, what a... What do you I mean? Think, when you said GTA brand to the bike situation, that's not like 5M strats, chat. I mean, they do it on 5M too, except that's also very real life strats. I know a person that has evaded cops with a bike. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, well, so kind of weird until he couldn't and he went to prison for it. But mm -hmm. right before this happened, right before he went into there, I've interviewed uh, him. His name is Jeff Wittek. He cuts my on the hair on this broadcast. No. Yeah. And now I'm listening to them. So they are sheriff's department. L.A. County Sheriff is now trying to get involved to. Uh, no, not a bicycle, a, a motorbike. Guy. They were already aware that there bike. was a pursuit in their area. You know what, Des? That was the guy. He was carrying a black sweater in his hand. When he got so out of the he, truck, so he played the video back. On? Oh, yeah. yeah. I just played okay. the video back, and when he got out, well, it was those same boots, distinctive boots that he was wearing, and he had a jacket in sure. his hand. Well, and now, you know, we've got a, a big homeless encampment here as well. Uh, a lot of places for uh, a suspect to hide. Um, obviously, yeah, very, very in. difficult for us to try to. We're actually. LAPD self-conducted a study shows that one-fourth of all car chases result in injury and death to the person being chased or innocent bystanders. Yeah, no reason to do it. To the right of your screen, uh, for our viewers there, that was uh, the, the suspect getting out of the vehicle wearing a white short-sleeved shirt. And we've since learned uh, from Mike Rogers from the Sheriff's Department that uh, they had a black sweater and they put the sweater on. The mad lad might have done him it. Walking. Okay. He might have done uh, it, dude. I thought I saw something. Listen, hobo code. There we go. Is that him? There we go. No, that's not him. No, that's not him. That's not him? No, that's not him. That's a random person. Unless he put on a sweatshirt over the white shirt. Nope. Black pants. Nope. Pants are different. Nope. Boots. Okay. Yeah. Hobo code. Looks like he was going to the to the encampment, to the homeless encampment. Yeah. Well, you know, guys, yeah, how do you, so, I mean, that's you, just know, you know where things he even is? More. I mean, how, where can he go? Hobo strats, dude. Yeah, he could stay well, underneath uh, the freeway there so we can't see him, right? But at some point you think he's going to come Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. this is Yakuza.
As someone in the chat said, when you rush into the homeless encampment to hide yourself amongst the homeless. They don't have the eyes for expert the level like strats this. here, you know, ladies and gentlemen. We are encountering a person that, not out of sheer happenstance, but actually through a lot of experience, has decided to utilize the oftentimes not under the oftentimes underutilized uh, hobo encampment strat. That's right, everybody knows that uh, homeless people have a code, a code of conduct that they follow. And therefore, therefore, they will not cooperate with the authorities. That's right. The underpass is basically like the parking garage strat. Very effective in uh, undermining the power that the air superiority to the Los Angeles Police Department and SkyCal has. KCAL News has no answer for the air visuals a couple of people there well one is running do we want wow. to stay with this folks or not yeah i think they want us to move on wow. desmond and mike we're going to go uh to other news and des while you're there getting more information we'll come back to this this uh high-speed pursuit that ended up with a suspect going into the water this so mission successful San gabriel river there and ending up on foot and we don't know where he is right now, but uh, Desmond is going to be. Mission success is done. Um, wait, is a lot of my friends are train hoppers. I didn't realize people still hop trains. I thought that was like old school practice. Motorcycle unit, maybe? Yeah, there we go. All right, we got a motorcycle unit. Yeah, good luck. Good luck asking the homeless people at the encampment for some advice. Like I said, hobo code. Don't talk to the popo. Oh my god. I hope he steals his fucking bike. Telling him, yeah, he went down yonder, sir. Wait, what? That's not him, dumbass. What are you doing? Bro, ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way the cop came up and arrested the first guy he saw. Oh my God, brother. Holy shit. They don't know for sure. They're just taking him into custody for now because he's a man in the area. Uh, what do you mean? There's so many men in the area. The car foot bailed, so. And there's one more in the encampment that they're looking at. This guy's like, can't leave empty-handed, brother. The is the description. is probably going to be detained. That's in this area. What? Oh, he's getting a little stretchy. Nice, dude. This is the assuming the cop stands here. <laughs> Homeless people don't have any rights. I swear to God. This is ridiculous, dude. I mean, I, I guess like as, as conditions worsen, most Americans don't have any rights in comparison to cops who have all the rights. But it's like wild that what, what are they going to do? Do a dragnet in the fucking homeless encampment and just like arrest every man? They're doing Israel yeah. shit, dude. I figured you couldn't see. Yeah, because... Yeah. <laughs> Brother, his dog is right there. You know what I mean? That should give you... Wait, I think that might be the... Ah, uh, no, it's not. That's not the guy either. It Never is, mind. Yeah. Him I, ...and sitting him down. We do not have any independent confirmation that this is the suspect... Related that's to not. He didn't case. change his pants. Uh, we're only working with what we can see simply right now. We are watching Fox 11 in the background right now. They are in the progress of their five o'clock news if they turn back to this story uh we will bring you we will tap into their feed and we will bring you their coverage in real time because they're going to be getting the details they're going to be monitoring the police scanners <laughs> uh what we're working with right now is their chopper shot so we work with what we can see 
And right now, what we see is one man. No, that's a different being guy. Detained. Also, stop appear, snitching, Chad. What if the cops the are watching? Got out of that pickup truck. It did appear to be a male. Uh, we don't have any confirmation that an arrest has been made. That lady didn't seem to care. It seems like a safe assumption that she told the cop it was him. They probably know who is in a part of their camp. What are you talking about? <laughs> they were just like walking side by side. Detaining I don't think that she said that to the cop that that was the guy. To give the woman next to him a kiss goodbye yeah. as he was being sat down. Yeah, she gave him a kiss. You think that? Why do you? Why are you writing this fan fiction? No, it's more likely that they're fucking homeless, so they know how cops are. And she's just like, "Yeah, see you later." Mwah. Give it a little kissy poo. The hobo Clearly kiss of the suspect, death. Uh, drove over a wash until his vehicle almost looked like it was forced to stop uh, as it uh, made its way over some pretty rugged terrain, eventually coming to a stop in the wash area where you see police investigating right now. I'm going to mute myself for a minute here. I'm going to work behind the scenes to see if we can find out He's any gonna more say details slurs. about this situation. Like I'm, I'm muting myself to say some slurs it. real quick. I got to get it out of my system. <laughs> It's look so like insane. our friends at Fox 11 are back on this pursuit. Let's listen to what their anchors were saying. They try to, as a precaution, detain people, um, and they turn out to not be the suspect. Yeah, yeah, and as a precaution. Like you got to do that. This, this person uh, is being detained. Uh, when they first got out of the vehicle, they were in a white T-shirt. We don't know if they were able to grab a black sweatshirt That's friend of the show, the Alex vehicle. Michelson, kind of hard to tell when it first happened. saying these things right um, now. So is this their guy? Um, or is this just a guy who happens to be nearby? That By the way, Alex, I think it was Alex who told me that, like, the, the helicopter guy is a fan. I, they know. They know we watch uh, his content. No, not Alex. This one is Alex. If it is e. the end, Christine, amazing that nobody got hurt. That'd be amazing if they got this guy. I would love to know the backstory on this. And you have to wonder if the people that are in that encampment area, if they were helpful or not in this situation. And also, there are homeowners. Uh, home was right behind the encampment as well. So, a scary situation. Wait, this Alex is a husband. I've had, bro, I went on a show to debate uh, to motherfuckers that was a lot. The, car, the suspect did have dark hair. Did appear to have blue jeans on. We talked about that white shirt. Don't know where this black jacket might have come from, but obviously police want to talk to this person. Okay, so we're going to try to get more information about what happened there. In the meantime, there is other news tonight and still ahead here on the Fox 11 no! News. No! Oh, Fox 11 right. moving away from this pursuit again. Austin Westfall back with you on live now. We are going to keep with this. We still have their chopper feed coming into our newsroom live in real time. So we're going <laughs> to just, just... And you know, we're, we're really working with the same stuff that they're working with. Uh, we saw a man being detained, and that's really the extent of what we Pops know. Pops is so always we digging around. That man is the man that was uh, being chased by police and driving so radically through the streets of uh, Whittier and, and other places around southern Orange County, which is located in Southern California, not too far away from Los Angeles. Um, we still see the police chopper. That's a police chopper right there. And we can simply work with what we're looking at right now. And I'll, I'll, I'll mute my mic one more time because we, we are working our sources behind He's the He's going to keep saying slurs. He's saying so many slurs. More details about He's like, chase. I have to keep muting my mic uh, again, to say just all to of the mean things I want to say. be joining now. Uh, there was a very erratic driver making his way through the streets of Southern California, driving on the wrong side of the road at very, very fast, dangerous speeds, uh, coming very, very close to some catastrophic head-on collisions. Uh, thankfully, it appeared that uh, major, you know, any sort of major collision was avoided, even though this driver was uh, driving quite erratically throughout the extent of this chase. Once the driver made his way off of the freeway, he started driving on a wash, and, and he started driving on uh, very uneven ground, some very rocky areas where we saw him driving through grass, rocks. Uh, it, was, it looked like the car was not made for the terrain that it was driving on, and eventually the vehicle came to a stop. At that point, we saw, and, and I should mention, by the way, that vehicle came to a stop underneath this freeway overpass. That's why we're so fixated on this area because, and we haven't shown the vehicle, at least our chopper hasn't gotten eyes on that vehicle uh, in a while here, but 
there is a dark colored pickup truck that was left by the suspect parked underneath that freeway overpass. And then after that, we did see the suspect get out of the car. He was wearing a white shirt. Um, he made his way underneath the overpass, and that's when we lost sight of him. Uh, after that, it became apparent that this immediate vicinity that he stopped in also happened to be an area where a homeless encampment was. So that further complicated things. Police, uh, you know, encompassing the scene. Uh, we have seen one person being detained so far. The person was wearing a black sweatshirt. He's not wearing a white shirt like we saw the suspect wearing who got out of the car. That is not to say that it was not the suspect, though. Uh, we need to make it plainly obvious that there was a good amount of time that passed between the last time we saw the suspect and when we saw that detainment being made. There's no telling if the suspect may have changed clothes, been given a black hoodie to wear. Um, there's no telling if the person that was detained is even the suspect. Um, as Alex Michelson was saying, the Fox 11 Los Angeles anchor who was just speaking, um, as he was saying, we simply don't know. Um, but clearly, yeah, they arrested a dude with different pants and different shoes. Just he was just a homeless guy. To be honest, if he was a theater kid, he could have pulled out the quick change. No, man. Either the guy is homeless himself and he knew the encampment was there and just like fucking ducked in there and now he's safe. Or, and different hair, by the way. Or he just lucked out and struck out and is like long gone. And now this one random guy is like cooked for no reason. To work with like we do right now, we just have to analyze sometimes the body language that the they know it's the wrong guy. They just stopped to complete a homeless side quest. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it doesn't really matter to them because the guy's homeless. You have no rights when you're homeless. So from the cop's perspective, it's like, well, he's definitely still he's definitely still a bad guy or, or the person that uh, was detained sitting on the ground there. Uh, it does look like there's a group of police walking to the area where the overpass is. I'm going to mute myself for a little bit. We're going to check in with our sources behind the scenes, see if any more details come about. But for now, uh, let's keep let's keep this image up. Let's keep watching. So many cops, not a single one's like, come on, bro. Let this guy go. He's obviously not the guy. Bro, they got the whole police department and not one guy is like, hey, maybe we should let this fucking random homeless person go. It's like, nah, dog, we got to show something. We got to show. We got to show uh, uh, for all of our efforts. Like we have to have something that we can demonstrate to the PD, you know? They aren't sure. What do you mean they aren't sure? We saw, we saw with our own two eyes, that's not the suspect. We know for a fact that that's not the suspect. What are you talking about? N not the same pants, not the same shoes, not the same hair, not the same top. His fucking girlfriend was right there. Gave him a little kissy poo. Not the same gait. Problem is, like, don't matter. Because, dude, you know what the guy did? The guy who actually evaded the authorities, you know what he did? It's like a, it's basically the equivalent of like a smoke grenade, okay? He knows the cops, uh, they have a short attention span. Folks, for those of you who don't know, police have a very short attention span. A couple things for you to know. One, their kryptonite is fentanyl. Okay? If you even say you have fentanyl in your pockets, a cop will immediately perish. Okay? They can't be around fentanyl. They'll die. The other thing is cops love beating the shit out of homeless people. Okay? So, basically, or donuts. This is basically the second best thing. If, unless you can get to, like, a Krispy Kreme... Okay. And get and and make sure the cops get their attention like and just uh you know kite them to a crispy cream, they're not going to chase you any further. This is the second best thing you can do.
is instead of a donut shop, you take them to a homeless encampment, all of a sudden they're like so focused on, uh, on all the homeless people around them that they want to beat up. They get like really excited that they, they lose sight of you. It's a taunt, not a smoke grenade. Fair. Yeah, that's basically what they did. Uh, the, guy, the guy basically kited them into a homeless encampment, knowing full well that they were just going to turn around and like look at all the dogs there that they can shoot, right? Or another one is, a, another one is obviously like a, like a shelter, like a pet shelter. If you kite cops into a pet shelter, they will also... They will also lose aggro immediately because like there's so many there's so many dogs that they can shoot and kill that they lose their minds and start opening up fire on random dogs instead. <laughs> they let him go. There it is. They freed my mans. Finally. Maybe it was the motorcycle. Did he just fist bump him for the detainment? Dude, I think these guys basically are so used to being apprehended by cops for dumbass shit all the time that they don't give a fuck. It's just like a, a normal part of their existence at this point. Need more about more four more cop cars. These guys back up now, dude. When I see stuff like this, I am reminded. When I see stuff like this, I am reminded of how, how much more funding the cops need. Okay. Because, like, think about it. There's, like, around, what, four squad cars back to back. Okay. There's like two more up there on the other side in the neighborhood, in the residential part of the neighborhood. There's three bikes in total for one fucking dude that drove around recklessly after stealing an old ass Toyota. Tell me if this ain't the best use of funds. Oh, and also who can forget multiple choppers too. There's always choppers. All right, so we're seeing a development there. It looked like that man in the black hoodie, black sweatshirt, I should say, is being released by officers. So uh, we saw him being detained. We were questioning whether or not that was, in fact, the suspect. We should mention the suspect was wearing a white T-shirt, but there was some speculation as to, did the suspect have enough time to change clothes? Um, there is this homeless community right next to this immediate area, so there were questions over... Could this the, be the suspect? Uh, yeah, Could fun this fact, be the uh, quick mm. reminder that the uh, operating budget, the daily operating budget of the Los Angeles Police Department is $8 million. Dollars? There, uh, them releasing him, indicative of the fact that that's not their guy. $8 million, ladies and They're gentlemen. looking for their guy. As we've been mentioning, a day. all we have to work with sometimes is One the day. body language of officers when we're watching these situations per day. in real time. And right now, these officers uh, right. really just hanging around. Uh, doesn't look like there's any immediate threat in the area and guess um, what dude they need 10 million dollars a day if anything think about that think about how much of a necessity 10 million dollars a day is these cops with all of the resources they have they still can't catch homeless guy clearly they need more money okay into this when you mix in the fact that there is a small homeless community in this area not only in this cluster that you just saw on your screen but there were several others um if the camera had been to pan more to the right. There are several more encampments in this area. So you got to imagine. This is why I don't feel as bad watching this kind of shit. Because I'm like, well, I paid for it. Uh, conversation. I paid for it. Might as well make content out of it. You know what I mean? Area, Fucking uh, assholes. From what we're able to see from the sky, doesn't look like they 
have their suspect in custody. The suspect that was driving so dangerously through the streets of Southern California. Uh, we saw a lot of this chase happening through the community of Whittier, uh, which is in uh, the northern part of Orange County, basically, uh, you know, oh, yeah. southeast. I do want to watch the 21 Savage um, video, actually. You know what? Speaking of crime, let's get to 21 Savage, who actually scammed Aiden Ross the other day.